Everybody's very happy about the selection. We're looking forward to him starting uh, with us. Um, on to more serious business, uh, not item that's not on my report that has developed quickly, though, and has been mentioned several times over the night is the COVID-19 emergency. Uh, San Rafael, City of San Rafael is following um, the County of Marin. We're going to be declaring an emergency, state of emergency, or local emergency tomorrow. Um, what has happened here recently is a vast amount of resources, time, attention, materials has been devoted towards trying to, you know, we can't say stay ahead of this issue because I don't think anybody stay ahead of it, but trying to deal with it as best we can um, in a city of San Rafael. In a city the size of San Rafael, it affects multiple departments, uh, not only emergency first responders, including our Marinewood colleagues here, but uh, departments such as uh, Park and Rec, um, community services, library, um, all sorts of different departments were, were all affected. So uh, staff is in the process of uh, preparing contingency plans, um, new cleaning policies, uh, personal protective equipment policies for first responders. Um, we're having daily meetings now, uh, all the department heads and directors. Um, our emergency manager, Quinn Gardner, has done an amazing job at uh, becoming extremely knowledgeable um, as to the kind of the scope of this emergency and is uh, basically directing, advising, and assisting all staff members um, in the fire department, we've already had two incidents where we've had to uh, self-isolate staff who were um, at a very low risk, uh, possibly exposed to COVID patients. In both those cases, it turned out to be negative. Uh, but what it showed us is we can basically have several staff members at any one time basically taken out of the game and set aside in self-isolation, hopefully not quarantine, but self-isolation until the patient that we've dealt with has been tested and the test results come back. That can take two to four days. Uh, so in both cases, um, we have an exposure with two employees and then we have an exposure with six employees. And uh, taking six employees off of shift and basically self-isolating them is a really big deal. It impacts the organization and it impacts the employees because what they're doing is they're returning to their homes and they're very concerned about their well-being. They're very concerned about the possibility of exposing their family members or their friends. Um, so it's a, a very high stress time. Um, our emergency manager is certain, as has been mentioned here, this is going to get far worse. Um, you know, we're concerned about uh, school closures, um, daycare closures. Uh, once that happens, then uh, the parents, our employees, uh, they're going to have a difficult time coming to work because they're going to have to be caring for their children. So we're looking at uh, employee shortages uh, in all departments. And of course, this is just San Rafael, this is going to be everybody. Um, as mentioned, there are no schools closed at this point. Uh, Mary Jane Burke is going to take it on a, on a basically a school by school basis. Uh, but, I, you know, I think we all see that this is probably going to deepen and broaden uh, before it starts to improve. So, um, it's, you know, it's going to have an impact on our local economy. We're struggling right now locating supplies, uh, mm -hmm. clean supplies, um, PPE supplies, because everybody's going at it at once right now. Uh, everybody's trying to stock up. So, um, this, is, this is basically... Uh, become up to 50% of kind of daily attention for a lot of staff members is just dealing with the COVID-19 crisis. And so this is going to be the long term. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to subside as, you know, the spring and summer weather gets here kind of like the flu and subsides. We're just not, nobody's sure yet. So um, it's just, uh, it's a major issue. We want to try and, and contain it and minimize it uh, the best we can. Um, there are regular uh, Marine County Fire Chiefs Association conference calls that are taking place. Uh, we're looking at contingency plans in case uh, agencies um, have employees that have to be taken offline, uh, expanding our sharing agreements so that we can move personnel around the county. So if one agency has a, a, a 
a major issue where several employees have to be taken offline, we can move employees around the county regionally, so we're looking at that right now. Um, so we're all trying to work collectively and uh, as, as a region, because obviously this is not a local issue, but it's a very serious issue, and uh, it uh, definitely affects um, first responders from the center. Uh, here in Marinwood, um, the Marinwood firefighters, I think, have done a, a, a very, um, taken a smart move. The, the volunteers have been temporarily uh, suspended from ride-alongs because we're trying to minimize the exposure to first responders, so there's no sense having volunteers on the engine responding to medical aid calls. Uh, it would require the department to increase the amount of PPE gear, the personal protective gear, uh, so that the volunteers are equipped. We just don't want to expose them to it. We don't want to have to incur the additional cost or trying to locate extra resources. So just temporarily, they've been uh, suspended from right along, which I think was a good move, and I supported that. Uh, let's see here. So that's the COVID-19 issue in a nutshell. Uh,